The presence of a polar bond in a molecule may or may not cause the entire molecule to be polar. So previously we talked about bonds being polar. Now we're going to talk about an entire molecule being polar. A polar molecule means that one entire end of the molecule is partially positive and the other end is partially negative. So in methylene chloride, we have carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, fluorine, and chlorine. So our chlorines are slightly negative, and our carbon is slightly positive. Just looking at that side of the molecule, we have a slightly positive side and a slightly negative side, which makes the molecule polar. Nonpolar compounds... means that the molecule is symmetrically arranged. The presence of polar bonds in a compound does not mean the entire molecule will be polar. If a molecule has polar bonds symmetrically arranged around the central atom, those charge centers will cancel themselves out and the particle is not polar. Example of that is CO2. In case you can't see that. Think of it like a tug-of-war contest. Both of the oxygens are pulling and being slightly negative, but they're pulling equally on both sides, so there's no change in dipole in this compound. So it's really hard to tell if a bonds are symmetrically arranged or if the molecule has a slightly positive and slightly negative end, and that's why there are some questions that you can ask yourself. So the first question is, is there only one bond in the particle? And is that bond polar? If so, then the entire molecule will be polar. Make sure that you're writing down the examples that go along with each of these. So HCl would be an example where the bond is polar due to an electronegativity difference, and therefore the entire molecule is polar. While if it was bromine, so two bromines, the electronegativity difference is zero, so it's a nonpolar bond, so this compound would be nonpolar. Number one is the only time that you look at the bonds. Number two, let's look at number five, or number four first. Number four says, are there any unshared pairs of electrons on a single central atom? This will always result in a polar molecule for our purposes. Later in AP chemistry, you'll see some exceptions to that, but for ours, we will not be talking about those. So if we had NH3, there's a lone pair on the molecule, meaning the molecule will be polar. It doesn't matter if the bonds are polar, the entire molecule will be polar because there will be an asymmetrical charge distribution. Number two, are there several identical bonds around the central atom which are symmetrically arranged due to there being no unshared pairs of electrons? If so, the molecule is polar. So silicon tetrafluoride has silicon and fluorine on it. That is a polar bond, but the entire molecule is nonpolar because it's the same thing all the way around. Number three says, are there different atoms around the central atom? If so, this will result in the molecule being polar. So if we had that silicon tetrafluoride, but we replaced one of the fluorines with a hydrogen, now we do not have the same thing all the way around, and so this one would be polar. And the last one we've already talked about. So you only look at the bond polarity if you only have one bond. Other than that, if you have the same thing all the way around and no lone pairs, it's nonpolar. Different things around central atom, then it's polar. And if you have lone pairs on the central atom, then it's going to be polar. For instance, looking at this one, we can see that carbon and chlorine, it says how many bonds are polar. Well, chlorine is a three on electronegativity. 
and carbon is a 2.5. So that's a difference of 0.5, so we have four polar bonds. Then it says, is the molecule itself polar? We have the same thing all the way around. No lone pairs on the central atom. So no, the molecule is not polar. So we have polar bonds, but a nonpolar compound. I'm going to pause the video and try this one on your own. Restart when you have both answers. Carbon was 2.5, oxygen was 3.5. So you should have said that both of those bonds were polar. And again, it doesn't matter that they're double bonds. You have two bonds, two double bonds that are both polar. And you should have said, no, the molecule is not polar. Because we have the same thing all the way around, do there be no lone pairs? I'm going to pause the video and try this one on your own. Restart when you have an answer for both. So nitrogen is a 3 and hydrogen is 2.1. So that is more than 0.4. So we have three polar bonds. Lone pairs do not count it as a bond, so we only have three bonds. And because we have lone pairs, this will be polar. It doesn't matter that we have the same things. They're not all the way around the molecule canceling the polar bonds out due to that lone pair. 